The following video is not endorsed nor sponsored by Dive Heart. I just wanted to make this video so I could share the wonderful experience that I had with this wonderful organization. Welcome to a brand new episode of Lewis's Adventures. I'm Lewis, your host. In this episode, we will talk about my advanced scuba certification as part of my journey in becoming a Paddy Master Scuba Diver, where I will be in Cozumel, Mexico at. For this video, I will be diving with Jim Elliott, founder and president of Dive Heart. I hope to get some interviews with both Jim and some of my fellow adaptive divers to include in this episode. Due to unfortunate circumstances, my other guest, Wendy Jane Warner Crown, won't be joining us for this episode due to recently getting surgery to repair her Achilles heel and shoulder, and I wish her a speedy recovery. She will appear with me in a future episode that I will plan to shoot sometime in 2017. Good morning, everyone. We're about to head out to Philadelphia International Airport to catch our plane to Atlanta, Georgia, where we will be landing at Hartsfield Atlanta International Airport for an hour long layover before catching our connecting flight to Cozumel. Okay, we've made it and landed at Hartsfield Atlanta International Airport in Atlanta, Georgia, and now we are currently on layover and soon as we get to our connecting flight, then it's off to Cozumel. We have landed in Cozumel at Cozumel International and are heading to our hotel. This is going to be a fun trip, one of the best that I have ever done in my life. We have arrived at Hotel Cozumel and this place is amazing, so close to the ocean. I'm so looking forward to diving those crystal clear waters. Stay tuned for coverage of my dives, rain or shine. Unfortunately, I thought I was doing boat diver, but turns out that wasn't the case at all. But I did get to do my two boat dives after my checkout shore dive with Tina Marie and Rachel. During my first dive, which was a drift dive, I unfortunately lost the fish identification slate that Tina Marie had given to me earlier that day to use for the fish identification course with Rachel and the whistle that came with the materials that Tina Marie had sent to me for the studying that I had to do for this trip. I hope you enjoy these clips, everyone. I'm on my way to my first ever boat dive. So looking forward to this since boat diver is one of the specialties that I'm currently pursuing. Along with drift diver, night diver, deep diver, underwater navigation, and lastly project aware fish identification. I will bring videos from those dives the best I can to make this a fun and interesting episode that I have done. I have some video to show you of when I was getting ready to do my navigation dive with both Tina Marie and Rachel. And if you're wondering how that went, well, I did good. I had to practice on land first before doing it in the water. Rachel had me do 24 kicks while using the compass to navigate. And it was a lot of fun. And I also did this during my night dive too. So enjoy. For my navigation dive, myself, Rachel, and Tina Marie did a 34-minute dive. Rachel showed me how to use the compass underwater to swim in the direction that the compass was showing me to go and 90-degree turns. While diving with this compass, I spotted a couple of spotted moray eels, which was amazing to see. Then we surfaced for a small surface interval and went back under the practice skills for night diving. The dive lasted for 26 minutes, and we got to swim around the reef near the beach. It turns out that the video that Tina Marie shot with me 
wasn't from my final two boat dives, but rather the two boat dives that I'd done the day before. I hope you enjoy these clips provided to me by her. Enjoy. On Wednesday, my buddies for my two boat dives that day were Dennis, Carol, and Mike. As we were going along with the current, Tina Marie gets us on camera during these dives. I'm starting to get better at relaxing, letting the current do its job, and scrolling my arms less underwater. I had failed to get to around 40 minutes, but I still get better and better at staying down longer for improved bottom times. Well, everyone, these are clips that I shot during my last two boat dives. I got to see a lot of amazing creatures, including some more eels, some nurse sharks, a grouper, and my longest ever dive on the trip that I'd done, breaking the record of 39 minutes, which I had first done with Rachel. This is a sign that I will be able to stay down longer and do better and more efficient dives in the future. Enjoy, everyone. One of the dive masters, Giovanni, attaches my head strap to my BCD, making filming much easier. I was able to get video from both of my last boat dives of the trip. On the first dive, it was myself, Greg, Martin, his son Daniel, and Santos. The dive lasted for 38 minutes. During that dive, I got to see a lot of creatures, including nurse sharks, green moray eels, and a grouper. Then, during the second dive, it was myself, Greg, David, John, Santos, and Giovanni. As we all submerged, I was able to not only get my group, but also the other groups in the water. While filming, Tina Marie took pictures of me and my team diving. On that dive... I got to see some lobsters, a barracuda, and various fish. This dive was my longest dive that I had done. The previous longest dive that I had done earlier in the week with Rachel was 39 minutes. The more dives that I do, the longer I stay down and get better with each dive. My friend Wendy Crown started a tradition of tossing coins into the sea for praying for good and successful dives. Which, of course, I did it during my last two boat dives to thank the goddess of the sea for the wonderful dives that we were blessed with on the trip. The um, dive master, Santos, was nice enough to give me a pesos coin, which I ended up throwing into the sea, and Tina Marie was able to film it. Here's that moment when I did that coin tossing ceremony. Enjoy, everyone. All right, go ahead. Yes, go. Everyone, my friend Wendy supposed to be here wanted me to throw this into the sea to pay respects for the dives we've done originally it was supposed to be done during the first but of course since we're near the end of this trip better late than ever <laughs> yeah. right. all right Lou toss it, it in epic, right, right. Okay. oh goddess of the sea muchos gracias for the wonderful dives you have blessed us with Yay! Yay! Good job, Lewis! Well, here are clips of me preparing to do the night dive with both Tina Marie Hernandez and Rachel Crane. I hope you all enjoy these clips, everyone. Hi, Lou. What are you getting ready to do? My first ever night dive and getting ready to be a advanced patty open water scuba diver. Very cool. As myself, Rachel, and Tina Marie get ready to slip into the water for the night dive, I was nervous but excited at the same time. I struggled to stay down due to the fact I forgot to put one of my weights in my BCD. In the end, the dive was amazing. I got to see things that I normally would never see at all during the day. Since you all know that Wendy Crown was not able to come on this trip, I was able to instead interview Tina Marie Hernandez the executive director of Dive Heart, and my instructor, Rachel Crane, the dive coordinator for Dive Heart. And here's the interview with Tina Marie herself. Hi, Tina Marie. Welcome to Lewis's Adventures, where I go on different adventures, including diving. May I please ask you some questions for this video of mine? Absolutely, Lewis. How did you get involved with Dive Heart? I got involved with Dive Heart as a volunteer five years ago after I met Jim Elliott at an alumni event. How long have you been with Dive Heart for? I've been with them five years and I've been executive director for three. 
What's been your favorite place in the world that you've traveled to with Dive Heart and been scuba diving at? My favorite place is Cozumel. What moment has been your favorite working and diving with people with different disabilities? My favorite moment was when last May one of the participants came up to me and said um, she just had someone come up to her and say, hey diver, and she was so happy that they took her as a diver and not as a person with a disability. How long have you been diving? I've been diving for five years. Lastly, what advice you have for people with any kind of disability who wants to take up scuba diving? My advice is to go for it. You can do whatever you want to do and we're here to help you do it. Thanks for allowing me to interview you and the advice you have to offer when diving. It was a pleasure. Thank you, Lewis. And here's the interview with Rachel herself. Enjoy, everyone. Hi, Rachel. Welcome to Lewis's Adventures, where I go on different adventures, including diving. May I please ask you some questions for this video of mine? Sure, you can. How did you get involved with Dive Heart? Um, in 2012, Dive Heart did a trip at the location that I worked at in Key Largo. So they came down and did a trip there, and I got to help on the boat. How long have you been with Dive Heart for? Um, I've worked for Dive Heart for about a year now. What has been your favorite place in the world that you traveled to with Dive Heart and been scuba diving at? Uh, probably Cozumel. What moment has been your favorite working and diving with people with different disabilities? Anytime that I make any of them smile um, is my favorite. I love it when they're excited underwater and they're seeing something for the first time and I got to experience that moment with them. How long have you been diving? I have been diving for about 10 years. Lastly, what advice do you have for people with any kind of disability who wants to take up scuba diving? I say that they should go for it. Anybody that wants to dive um, should get a hold of us and we will help them start diving. Thanks for allowing me to interview you and the advice you have to offer when diving. It was a pleasure. Okay, bye-bye. Well, I was only able to interview one fellow adaptive diver, and that's Nick Johnson. I was unable to interview others due to time constraints and some of them weren't interested in it. But here's my interview with Nick anyways. Enjoy everyone. Hi there, I'm Lewis and I'm doing interviews for my show on YouTube. I was wondering if I could ask you some questions. Sure you can. Tell me who you are. My name is Nicholas Johnson. I'm from Chicago, Illinois. And I'm a proud sponsor of Dive a participant and I've been diving with them for five to six years now. And I'm 29 years old. What made you get into scuba diving in the first place? Uh, my dad. How'd you learn about Dive Heart? My dad. What do you think of Dive Heart's mission to help people with all types of disabilities through the use of scuba diving? To learn, just help them learn uh, about war and fears and help them with more disabilities and all that and more. What has been your favorite part of this trip so far? Just being with friends, family, Dive Heart. <laughs> Swimming in the pool, the ocean, seeing all the good uh, marine life and coral life in the ocean. Well, everyone, here's the moment you've been waiting for. My interview with CEO Jim Elliott. I had to do this quickly due to the fact that my iPhone's battery was running low on power. So, enjoy. Welcome to my show and this series dedicated to inspiring people with all types of disabilities. Can I ask you some questions? Absolutely. How was Dive Heart born and what inspired you to start this wonderful cause? Well, you know, I've, I've thought about that a lot and going way back, I realized that my dad was a disabled veteran and I'd run around VA hospitals and dodge wheelchairs for years and then my old, my scoutmaster had one arm. And then, and then my best friend, had cerebral palsy and I used to defend him walking him to school. And then, of course, I, I, I have a child who's blind, born blind. My daughter, my oldest daughter is born blind. So when she struggled with being blind, I got her involved in downhill skiing back in the 1980s. And it, and it changed her life. And I went, oh my God, if skiing can do this, what can diving do? Because I've been diving since college as a journalism major. I thought, if I ever need to learn to, to dive, to interview someone like Jacques Cousteau, who's a famous diver, I better know I better know how to dive. So I took it and I went, oh, this is like being an astronaut. This is crazy cool. 
And I said, you know, if diving or skiing can, can turn my daughter's life around, other people with disabilities, I know what diving can do. And so after 30 years in the media business, I decided to leave and start a nonprofit called Dive Heart. And DiveHeart.org is where you can find the most amazing stories of hope and healing really in the world. I mean, if you went to YouTube and put in Dive Heart Foundation channel, you would find 90 YouTube videos, NBC Nightly News, CNN, we've done a TED Talk, um, PBS did a documentary on us. And, and basically the bottom line is it's not about scuba diving. It's about helping people, not just with disabilities, but people of all abilities, imagine the possibilities in their life. So really, the experience I've had my entire life has led me to where I am, and I've left a very successful career in television to do this. And, and, and here we are, changing lives, and we've become an industry changer. We've influenced and inspired people. Um, we've, we've started programs all over the world, China, Australia, Israel, the UK. We just got back from Malaysia. And, and we're, you know, we have wonderful sponsors and wonderful supporters who help us make all these things happen. Because our goal is to make, allow the indigenous people and communities around the world to work in a zero gravity environment. We call it scuba therapy. And, and scuba therapy is, is you know, it, it can I was going us. to ask you, yeah. how does scuba therapy benefit someone with a serious disability? Well, it's a, that's a brilliant question because when, when you're in underwater, you're in zero gravity, right? So there's it's physical therapy in zero gravity. It helps with range of motion, a few mobility issues. Pressure is how inherently helps individuals with autism. Right? So you have that therapy, but then we're talking to researchers from university and medical centers all over the world that are helping us understand it. You know, maybe if you added enriched air and 100% oxygen, or, or really even pharmaceuticals. I mean, our drug does this at one atmosphere, what does it do at three atmospheres? So there's a there's 100 years of research ahead of us right now for scuba therapy. Do you take adaptive divers diving to different parts of the world in addition to Cozumel, Mexico? All over. All over the world, yes. We've done programs in hundreds of cities in the U.S. Uh, we found that Cozumel, Mexico, where we stay and where I've trained all the instructors, it's warm and, and it's very inexpensive and it's worked out best because really so few people scuba dive. And the reason is in, in all of North America, there are very few places. Lakes and quarries are not the place that you want to go diving necessarily. There are, there are people that do it and love it. But really, most people, and especially people with disabilities, do not, it's not conducive. You need a warm environment. You need clear water. You, you need, don't need to create anxiety. And sometimes these quarries and, and, and lakes create anxiety for people with disabilities. Who does Dive Heart work with through the scuba diving community? Well, you know, we really don't focus on the community uh, in scuba diving. We really work with medical research organizations like the Rehab Institute of Chicago, Northwestern University uh, in Chicago, uh, Cornell. We've done, our teams have done projects with um, John Hopkins and Kennedy Krieger, Duke University. We presented at the Grand Rounds at Duke in uh, North Carolina. We've um, also presented the Grand Rounds at the Rehabilitation Institute in Chicago. In, in Chicago. So, we, and, and, We've talked to researchers in Israel and, and, and in uh, Malaysia and different parts of the world where we're beginning to understand the collaborative opportunities that exist between all our organizations. How long have you been diving? 1976. Lastly, what advice you have for people with any kind of disability who wants to take up scuba diving? I would say, I would say, always focus on and imagine your, possi your, your, your possibilities. Um, don't let people tell you you can't do certain things. Uh, people with disabilities a lot of times are told from birth they can't do something. You can't play basketball, you can't play football, you can't play baseball, right? And then if you have a traumatic injury, you're no longer the person you were. So if you have a traumatic brain injury, for example, because you're, you, you were in the war or because you got hit by a car, all of a sudden, you're no longer the man or the woman that you were. So my advice would be to assess your abilities and take those abilities and move forward and imagine the possibilities. And we are here to help make that happen. Thank you for allowing me a bit of your time for the interview and the advice you have to offer when diving. It was a pleasure. Well, on the final night 
of this trip, I, along with everyone else, had to explain our story of how we got involved with Dive Heart. And for me, I explained why I was on the trip and how I was able to turn it into this wonderful video that you are all watching. Here is my speech, everyone. Enjoy. And I had the, I must say, it was a pleasure to get trained further in, in my Patty Advanced Open Water Diver by the lovely Rachel. But of course, just like her, it is also my first time here in Cozumel. And I look forward to coming back here in the future with the intent of getting more training, more dives, and even diving with the lovely crew of the Aries. <laughs> and I also like to thank Tina Marie Hernandez and of course Jim Elliott for allowing me to make, I meant to say allow me to make a YouTube video out of this experience, which of course will be up on YouTube once it's been completed and edited. And of course originally my friend Wendy Crown, who is also friends with Jim, Rachel and Tina Marie, couldn't be here with us because of injuries, of course I hope she'll join us next year as I go for further training. And I thank her as well, and if it weren't for her, I would not be here. And I also like to thank my mother. And you, Rachel. Okay. If it weren't for you, I would not be an advanced open water diver now. I look forward to working with you. I'd like to thank everyone for the hard work and the donations that went into me going on this trip. If it wasn't for you, I would never have been able to even shoot this video, let alone go on this trip with Dive Heart. And I thank you all from the bottom of my heart. Well, the diving was amazing. Got to do a lot of specialties. Seen a lot of sea creatures for the first time ever in the wild. Until next time, this is Lewis signing off from Cozumel, Mexico. If you like this video, please hit the like button below and be sure to subscribe to my channel, especially those with disabilities similar to mine. You can also follow me on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. I always say it's time for adventure. Mm -hmm.